There you are. Good morning, community of faith. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Don't you love it when you save something in a place where you know exactly where it is? <laughs> and, and then, <laughs> and then. Good morning, Brother Tanbeer. It's good to see you, sir. I uh, I keep saying to myself, self, <laughs> um, this is as easy as copy and paste, but boy, oh my goodness. It's, uh, I guess it's a little bit bigger than that. I declare all my equipment functions properly. Hallelujah. Speaker with us. Afternoon, Brother Tambier. Brother Robert Moldermans. Saw that. And uh, hello. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we're we're rolling here. We are rolling. I'm just getting my uh, stuff all put together. And I would like to say to you that it's just as easy as copy and paste out of a note over there, but it just changes it. It puts it in a form that is just not what we're doing. And so we just welcome you to be here, be a part. Those of you that come from my personal Facebook page, if you click the button, you click the video in my in there, uh, it'll it'll bring you right over to the video on community of faith, and just for people that um that don't quite understand why we did that, made that move, uh, we made that move because we have so much more ability to do things on the community of faith page than we do on my personal page, and we can see exactly where we're at and what's happening and it just gives us a lot more ability uh to be a blessing and that's what we're doing here is being a blessing to people so we welcome you we thank you for being with us like the page love the page come on in and help us Yeah, that's true, Brother Tambier. That's true. Yep. Just like before TV was not invented and people were listening to the radio. That's the truth. We listened to the radio every single morning as a kid growing up, going to school, doing all that we did. We listened to that radio station. And it gave us encouragement. It gave us strength. We listened to preachers. They preached bad doctrine to us that caused us to believe it. <laughs> and, and thank you, Alicia. God, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, my goodness. So 
Everybody give Elisa a high five. I love it. I love it. Wow. Wow. All right. So everybody else is uh, saying, what you wow in there? <laughs> so this is what I'm wowing right here. Send it to you. And uh, you can hook up over there and take a look. And uh, it's a beginning of uh, a website for us sister elise has been doing an amazing job on that and uh you know i love it because it's a beginning it's a start For some reason i can't get that picture of williston to open up but it's all right that's awesome Look at them rainbows. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's the YouTube channel that opens up into it. Alisa? It is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Absolutely awesome. <laughs> huh. Well, for those of you it's like uh brother Samuel, we're over here. Yeah. We're <laughs> I'm like a kid in a new toy with a new toy in the candy store here. I'm like, whoa, look at over this. Look at this right here. You gotta wait until after Look what I got, Mom. <laughs> hallelujah. <clears throat> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's that's really excellent work. Thank you. And it'll just keep going and growing. And, you know, it'll be a it'll be a powerful force that'll help a lot of people. So we welcome you. Now, all through our Christian life, we've got to look at ourselves and say, where am I at? What am I doing? And what's going on around me? Because nobody wants to live their life in an unproductive way. Does that make sense? Everybody wants to be accomplishing something. It's the natural born human nature that you and I are accomplishing something every single day of our life. No different is you and I right here accomplishing something in what we're doing in this situation. This is noon prayer and we're here for prayer and we're here to speak our, our faith and prayer and we are seeing God do a mighty work. So, here we are. God help us get accomplished on this day what we should get accomplished. Can I get an amen from anybody? Amen. So, I encourage you to be here and be a part. Share it with your friends that like to pray. Now, you know, I, I, I'm going to make this statement. And I'm going to uh, make it boldly. But we got to realize something. We got to realize I got a mosquito floating around in here in my lemon juice and water. Hey, float to the other side so I can have a drink. <laughs> now. There's a lot of people who will say, 
well, what is prayer and what kind of prayer should we pray? And should we bless people? Should we curse people? Should we, you know, however all that works. Well, never should we curse anyone. All right. Except we should speak what God speaks. Can I get an amen on that? <clears throat> but, but here's the deal. God calls a man who says there is no God a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The fool in his heart has said there is no God. Wait, you can't sugarcoat it. You can't say, yeah, but God loves all fools. God loves everybody. But God has to let you and me be what we are. In that statement, there's a whole lot of people that all of a sudden, when you teach that doctrine, check out because they're like, hold it, hold it. I don't want God to let me be who I am. <laughs> Mary, Mary Ann, it's good to see you, ma'am. God bless you. If you click on that video on the site there, you'll come right over where our comments are, and you are very welcome here. God bless you. So think about this statement. People say, well, wait a minute, Pastor, Dr. Reverend, Brother, so-and-so. Um, I, I don't want God to give me what I'm speaking. <laughs> well... Yeah. Then there's this simple lesson of life. Stop saying that and start saying this. And now all of a sudden, great strength comes to you and great help comes to you. I got him. Got the mosquito. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> so that's where we're at right here right now. You and I are determined. Say this with me. I am determined to walk with God every day. I am determined to walk with God every day. I am determined to come to the greatest level of understanding there can be about prayer. Does God want us to pray? Yes. yes. Does he want us to pray effectively? Yes. Does he want us to pray fervently? Yes. yes. How do you know? His word says, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. Well, God don't want us just flapping our lips. He wants us to get something done. And all of a sudden, now that we're coming to this better understanding of who we are and the understanding of who our enemy actually is, we're coming to the understanding of what kind of prayer to pray in order to overcome. Now, pe people say, well, are you saying we shouldn't pray? No, we have to pray. God said, my house shall be known as a house of prayer and praise. So you and I got to do our part in that to be praying and speaking the word of God which is why we are where we are, which is why we're studying what we are, which is why God continually brings me back to these same verses over and over again, because the image of prayer has to change from in here, out here. If our image is, I've got to storm the gates of heaven, well, the Father's sitting on the throne saying, um, guys, the gate's open. Why don't all y'all just come in? <laughs> Peter's out at the gate. You know, the classic story about Peter's at the gate. Peter's at the gate saying, hey, there's no storms up here. Just walk on in. That's all you got to do. Just walk. All y'all just walk on in. <laughs> and we're out here going, oh, God. And, and he's like, hey, stop your yelling. How about we just have a conversation? See, there's a difference in revelation that we got to come to. And and here's the reality of it. The sooner, what's that? 
welcome Mary, Pastor Rick. Mary and Pastor Rick and all the other folk to come with you. Bless you. We're glad to have you here with us. See, now all of a sudden, you and I will change our, our words and we'll change our mentality because we won't be doing something that doesn't seem to work. Why do you think people have to feel like they got to storm the gate? Because the prayers ain't working. Why is the prayer not working? Not because he's not listening. He's always listening. Wait. One of Jesus' assignments is to be always interceding for his children. Well, how often is always interceding? That means right now, at this very moment, Jesus is interceding for you and me. Well, then, Brother Pastor, Reverend Dr. Samuel, what's going on? We are on this end doing and saying something. Then he's like, why are you doing that? You know, it's like the first time you you, you had your kid do something um, with the dishes. You know, you had a... You, Hey, let me show you how to do dishes. And they stand up there and put stuff over in that sink and back in this sink and that back in the sink. And you finally had to say, all right, now this is how we do it. We wash them in this sink. We rinse them in this sink. And we put them in that strainer. Now, you and I got a revelation that all of a sudden, things, things will begin to move and change in our life. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah, amen. I'm, I pray that too, Mary. I really do. And I think one of the greatest revelations for people to come and be a part of us is you and I having the testimonies on the inside that we do, where where when people are talking, we're like, oh man, let me tell you a story, because brother so-and-so in our group had this happen. Sister so-and-so in our group had that happen. And a marvelous, amazing testimonies of God's work. And what an amazing thing. You know, I uh, I really want Sister Gwen to come on and tell us her testimony. But um, she's been on vacation. <laughs> so God bless Dave and Gwen. I, I think today they're probably coming back. And the cool thing is everything they've been believing, God manifested in their life this last week. Well, not I mean, not everything, but. God manifested a bunch of things for them this week. And I could tell you some of the story myself, but I don't want to tell you that story. I want to hear her tell you that story. I want you to hear her tell. Did I say that inside out? There's a bunch of stories and there's a bunch of telling and there's a bunch of people. So put it all together. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's pray. You ready? Let's pray. Are you praying this time? Or am I? All right. I have now received permission to pray. Here we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every one of these friends who are with me, the community of faith. And Father, we stand here today sit here, whatever we're doing, driving, as the community of faith, determined, we are determined to be found in the place you want us to be. All this mess in America, where are your people? Speak through us. We are, we are your people. Speak through us today. See these lips, Lord? They're your lips. Speak through them. Speak the perfect will of God through our lips that you want done on this earth. As you taught us, Jesus. Thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Well, that means we got to understand heaven. Got to understand earth. And we got to understand our place between heaven and earth. And thank you, Father, you're giving us that revelation every single day. And we receive it. 
guide our words, guide our steps. May our, may our brothers and sisters, we're ones we haven't seen in a while, may they be able to stop by today in the middle of their day and we be a blessing to them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. And amen. It's 1221. I want us to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Moment of silence. And God bless America. For those of you that are from around the world, I encourage you with this statement. For such a time as this, you have come to the kingdom. Now, I know, guys, that we post these verses all the time. But for all the verseteers, thank you for posting them. Add the reference because we don't know who all the people are that are coming. And that means every day we have new people with us. And they need to see these verses and these references and know, hey, this is for me. I know by the Spirit of God that every time we do this, somebody new is a part of us with us. Look at this verse. For such a time as this, you and I have come to this kingdom. You and I have, right here, right now today. It doesn't matter where you are around this world. For such a time as this, you have come to the kingdom of God in your nation in your world, in your place, you have come there. And that is the blessing of God in Jesus' mighty name. While we talk about America, you talk about your nation. Because when we all stand together around the world in that united force, the brethren dwelling together in unity, this thing has an amazing amount of power in Jesus' mighty name. Are you ready? Stand together with me. Render your honor by saluting and placing your hand over your heart. Let's make our pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we'll have a moment of silence. This moment of silence is in honor of those who are missing in action, those who have paid the last full measure of a de devotion, and those who are wounded in their body and their spirits, for those who have served our veterans, and for the men and women serving today. This uh, moment of silence will last for 21 seconds in honor of the 21 rifle volleys that are fired at the funeral of a fallen soldier. It is proper and expected that during a moment of silence, you stand in silent honor with your head bowed, your hand over your heart in honor of their selfless service in Jesus' mighty name. This moment of silence begins now. Now, if you will, join us in singing, God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountain to the prairie. To the ocean, white with foam, God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet
Let's pray for the, the troops and the families. Father, in Jesus' name right now today, we stand in faith and in prayer and speak your word over everyone who has served in the United States of America. On this day, we speak the word of God. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed, and they will be comforted. Jesus, you said there is no greater love than a man would lay down his life for a friend, even more an enemy. Thank you, Father. You said you would turn our mourning into dancing. Don't know how you do it. We receive it in our lives so that our life can be blessed. We thank you, Father, that you've given us the balm of Gilead, the healing balm. You said we would give beauty for ashes. Who knows how to do that except that we speak your word and you get it done. And we thank you for it. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And today, we bless every mom and dad, every brother and sister, every husband and wife, every warrior, every veteran who today still sees their the uh, oath of office they took, their enlistment oath, as important today as it ever was. Thank you for these men and women around our nation. And to all those who don't understand it, because they've never served. Help them come to that understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. We know the blood of every great warrior who has given their life in battle cries out today, God bless America. As Abraham Lincoln said, nobody can consecrate. Nobody can dedicate. Nobody can can do what these have done for freedom all over the world. Their brave lives, their brave love for this nation, their desire to help and be a help, we declare in the name of Jesus that the blessing, the blessing of the Lord is theirs. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, thank you that we have a place. It's not just those that carried a rifle. We have a place in American history. And we declare today, help us the living to be dedicated to this work which they were dedicated and fought so valiantly for. We declare out of our mouths that this nation experiences a new birth of freedom right now and this government of the people by the people for the people will not perish from this earth long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light protect us Lord by thy great might great God our King in Jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen, and amen, and amen. Makes you want to sing again. From the mountains to the prairies to the ocean white with foam. We're in the prairies. We love it. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Well, amen, hallelujah. And amen. And thank you for being here and being a part of this. Now, let's go to our verses for today. We are now in, uh, once again today, we are in the verses of Ephesians chapter 6. So if you'll go there with me, our verses that we're going to start off with is Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10, 11, 12, and 13. 10 through 13. And we're going we're gonna to just keep hitting this because here's what's going on on the inside of us, guys. God 
is helping us to see a whole new side of everything about ourselves. The greatest thing you're ever going to see is about yourself. Say it. Lord, help me see myself. I got to see myself. You know, it's like, it's like the one guy said, well, you know, I don't care what anybody sees. I don't care what anybody, I just don't care what anybody sees. Well, I got a word for you. We care <laughs> what we see. <laughs> and, and can you imagine God in heaven and Jesus is like, come on guys. That's, that's not the process. And, and he's got his finger on the book. He's like, no, 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 no. Right here, this page, this one. And we're like, no, Jesus, this one over here. He's like, no, 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 it's no. this one right here. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is in heaven saying, I'm telling you, I really know this. <laughs> and you and I are like, I know you know it, Jesus, but what about this? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Versateers, for adding those references. Even though I've 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 got it in my notes today where I can just copy and paste it and put it over there. Um <clears throat> still make sure we get those references. Thank you guys. Now, the Apostle Paul is in the book of Ephesians. Wait, let's just, let's do this. Give me just a second. This, is, this isn't in my notes, but it's all right. This ain't in my notes, but this is all right because this is good for us. You ready? I'm going to page number, I'm going to page number, it's coming. I'm going to page number. Come on, pages. I'm going to page number 2,086 in the Bible. <laughs> and I want you to I want you to see this. All right. <clears throat> God, through the Apostle Paul, in the book of Ephesians, is teaching us that we are one with God and we should be one with each other and the enemy has no power. Now, Ephesians chapter 1, the whole chapter is about you and I becoming one with Almighty God. All right? God has got the plan of salvation for us and then and, and chapter 2 is spiritual revelation of who we are. Chapter 3 is the mysteries of God his divine purpose in our life. Chapter 4 is the body of Christ. <clears throat> Your gifts and mine all functioning together for growth and development in the body. Chapter 5 is how we function together in love. And chapter 6 is beat the bloody snot out of the devil's head and keep his head crushed in your life every day. The book of Ephesians. All right. Now, think about this fact. These are some important words in Ephesians. Together, all of us together. We are one with Christ. We are in Christ. We got heavenly places all through this book. And then the riches of his grace, of his glory, and of, his, and of Christ. Now think about everything I just said. I just went to the back of the book, um, Elisa, and all that's in the back of this Thompson chain. I don't know if you bought one or not. But I said all that for this purpose. We're, we're in the book of Ephesians, one of the most powerful books in the New Testament, because of the revelation that's here in this book. You will find, as you continue your Christian life, that you will be in Ephesians. All right. And, <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Romans. Corinthians. Galatians, Ephesians, and, and Philippians, and Colossians. Those are called the pastoral epistles. Paul is showing you and I how to live, all right? And he's teaching us. Now, most of us know to love our brother. Most of us know to work together. Most of us know to love God. But now Paul in the book of Ephesians is saying, wait, get a revelation of this. I think myself personally think 
The greatest revelation of the book of Ephesians is Ephesians chapter 1, verse numbers 20 through 20, 23. Write the reference in, and let's look at this. This is the greatest, please, please, please. I said please three times. Ephesians 1, 20 through 23. Because what does this do? Diane, welcome Diane. We're glad you're with us. I didn't see you, Diane. Come on, Paige, work. Diane Johnson, welcome. We welcome you to be a part of this. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, look at this. Look at these verses. Because here's the power of learning to pray effectively. All of a sudden, we're not going to have to be doing all this screaming, hollering, and yelling because we're going to just be functioning in who we are, which is a powerhouse for God impervious to the enemy. Can't touch us. You don't have no power. Now, <laughs> there's a whole lot of people in the kingdom that be like, I don't know what that man's teaching, but what doesn't he know about our enemy? Wait, do you realize that everything that's happening with all this anarchy and these riots, that's just a deception? It's just a deception. You're like, Brother Samuel, have you not noticed that they actually tear down buildings and destroy things? Oh, yeah. The deception is that you and I, the body of Christ, can't stop it in one day. Well, then why haven't we? I can guarantee you the prayers from this group of believers is working mightily to stop it in one day. Why? We're not, we don't believe we got to storm the gates of heaven. We believe we hear from heaven. He gives us a word. We speak it. Bam, it comes to pass. Well, why isn't it just absolutely destroying all this stuff? Um, I don't have that answer yet. Because I know our words and our faith is wickedness stop now. Amen. Amen. The only thing I can see is the number of people that are bound by the confusion and the deception. They're doing what? Speaking yeah, they're the speaking the opposite of us. They're speaking the opposite. And so what we got to do is join the body of Christ together and say, join with us. Speak in faith. Wait, not because you got to say it in repetition like the heathen, right? Not because you got to storm the gates. Because God needs our words speaking into the atmosphere greater than what the enemy's words are speaking in the atmosphere. The enemy has no power unless you give him authority over you. I'm getting to my verses. Are you ready? I know we've read them a thousand times. Say it with me. We're going to read them a thousand times more. Amen. Amen. And those of you who are with us here and you see this and hear this, you and I are going to watch God go kaboom and make mighty things happen because we're staying focused. Verse 20, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Where is Jesus? The right hand of the throne on high, and it's the right hand of power. All right? 21, far above all principality. Now, look at these are all, the word and is a conjunction. So, you, you can use far above for all of this. Far above all principality. Far above all power. Far above all might. Far above all dominion. Far above every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him, Jesus, to be head over everything. Jesus is the head of it all. Head over all things to the church. And you ready? Which is his body. 
the fullness of him who fills all in all. Now, say this with me. In the name of Jesus, I am the fullness of Jesus on this earth. Right now. You want to know what Jesus looks like? Ready? How do they do it? That's what Jesus looks like. Because I'm him. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Welcome every church. Good to have you with us. Welcome every church. Say it with me. I am the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form on this earth. Now, I know some people are like, whoa, brother, Dr. Reverend. Well, get to Revelation. Follow us. And, and every day say, Lord, help me see what Brother Samuel is teaching us. Just say it down deep in your heart. Lord, help me see what Brother Samuel is teaching us. Look at this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 6. And he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in, in Christ Jesus. Well, you might say, but I'm still on the earth. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. But look at what it says about what's going on even while you're sitting here on this earth. Jesus, the Christ, has raised us up together from the dead, dead in trespasses and sin, to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. People say, I'm on earth. I know. But what is Jesus telling us? The fullness of the body is you and me on this earth, and we are in Christ. Right now, right here, today, <laughs> on purpose. Keep reading, verse 7. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Say it. I was dead in sin. Dead he in raised sin. me up. He raised me and I'm seated beside him. And I'm seated beside him. Now, we are on this earth. God is inside of us. And it is our place on this earth to speak this earth into the proper order that it's supposed to be in. Alright? We're going to go verses 9 through 12. Ephesians 2, 9 through 12. Or 8 through 12. For by grace you've been saved through faith. Yes, I have. And that is not of yourself. It's the gift of God. Yes, it is, and we receive it. Not of works, lest somebody should boast. You can't boast in something you receive as a gift. The only thing you can do is glory in the fact that you have it, right? I got this. I got this ring from Mylene. I can't boast about it. She bought it. She said, "I want you to have it." Guess what? I have it. I enjoy it. I wear it. Hallelujah. Verse ten. For look at this verse. For we are his workmanship. God's creating us. He's making us. Created in Christ Jesus. For good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You and I have got to be like, Lord Jesus, you have set this up. Now help me walk in it. In the mighty name of of Jesus. Now, let's grab another verse. Our title today is, You Are Strong in the Lord. You are strong in the Lord. Now, I told you at the beginning to go to Ephesians chapter 6, and then I got off of it and never read it. So I'm going to read it now. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 14. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Paul said, after everything I've taught, 
in the in, in book of Ephesians, be strong in the Lord. All of this should make you strong in the Lord <clears throat> and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God <clears throat> that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the trickery, the deception of the devil. Verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Well, that's our wrestle, but they're already defeated by Jesus. He raised Jesus high above them, and we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So, it has no power on us. 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, verse 14, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. I like it. I like it when you put those words in there like that, Elisa, because that gives people an idea of what they should be looking for in those verses. It's a powerful, that's a powerful addition, and I, I appreciate your help in that. Guys, all the armor of God is truth, the word, and righteousness. It's truth the word, and righteousness. You walking in the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus is one of the greatest pieces of armor there is. Why? The righteous are as bold as a lion. You, you being bathed in the truth every day gives you a boldness and a courage no enemy can overcome. It's going to put peace in you. And you look at what it says. What is the part of the armor that is peace? Your shoes are shod in the gospel of peace. And that means everywhere you go, you're going to be walking in peace. When you walk in a room, peace should fill the room. Every one of us. Not just me. When you walk in the room, peace fills it. And you might, you might be like, yeah, Pastor, when I walk in the room, sometimes people get up and leave. Well, let's check who you are. Check what's going on in your life. You're not a bad person. So let's check it out and see. What's emitting from you? Um, well, I wear, you know, I wear this one perfume. <laughs> no, it's not the perfume. It's what's down inside. The reality is you're a new creation. And if we allow something from our old life to be what's coming out of us, rather than the new creation that God's made us, man, we're, we're being deceived. And we're being held back from what God really wants us to be held back. You are not a bad person, Dave. You're a good person. Bless you, sir. Love you. So, you ready? Let's, let's do this. I want to go to Philippians chapter 1, verse um, 15. Um, 15 through 17. Philippians 1, 15 through 17. Now, there's some people that will say, I, I ain't going there. This is what we know. We know the word of God and we're going to speak it. Watch this. Some indeed preach Christ from envy and strife. Man, don't follow those people. Don't follow. When you get around them, they're going to stir your spirit up and make you feel bad. And wherever there's strife, all right, watch what Paul says. Some also from goodwill. All right, they're just glad they want to do something good for people, so they're preaching. 16, the former pre preach Christ from selfish ambition. There's people who want to control people, they get in, they preach Christ. Not sincerely. And then there were some who was preaching, supposing to add affliction to Paul's chains. That's messed up, isn't it? Preach so that somebody can be bound down. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now, there's a mess of them people on the, 
on the internet. And I, there you go. Know the word of God. Thank you, Elisa. I'm going to warn you about these people who feel like it's their responsibility to rebuke the great leaders of this day. Now follow my thought. Number one, David said, touch not God's anointed. But that came from God speaking about the children of Israel against Pharaoh. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Let's ask a simple question. If you've never amounted to anything spiritually, you've never accomplished anything in God, you've never got um, a, a thousand, a million, or even 50 people saved, who are you to judge one of God's leaders and make some kind of a declaration about how wicked and awful they are when they've re been responsible for bringing thousands and thousands and thousands of people to Christ. Because these people are out there. They're going to tell you, all this standing in authority stuff, no, that ain't, that ain't God. you got to just storm the gate. No. Watch what Paul said. 17. The latter out of love, knowing that I'm appointed for the defense of gospel. 18. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And in this I rejoice, and I will rejoice. This is the craziest story that I've ever heard on this, but I, I want to tell it. And then we're going to pray. If you haven't, I'm going to pray a little bit out of this book. So if you want to run and get yours, so you have it, make sure you do that right now while I tell the story. This is a classic story of this. It was outside of, of a believer's convention with Brother Copeland. A man who's totally given his whole life to the gospel. Refused to borrow a penny from the bank so that all the interest money that he would have paid to a bank to build buildings and stuff he needed to do, all that interest money could be given to preachers around the world. All right, so he, here's one of the believers' convention, and there's a thousand people on the sidewalk waiting to get in because everybody wants to sit as close to the front as they can get. They're not back pew people in the believers' convention. They want to be in the front pew. <laughs> and here's these people that have actually written a book about Brother Copeland and what he teaches and how wicked he is and they're handing the book out to everybody on the sidewalk. All right? Now listen. The people handing out the book have never got anybody healed from any disease. And in every believer's convention, hundreds, maybe even a thousand people are healed. Now you get the picture? Here's somebody saying how bad they are, handing a book out to everybody on the sidewalk, and they've never amounted to anything except skepticism and determination to cause this man to fall and not go forward. And they've never got anybody born again. They never got anybody saved. They've never got anybody filled with the Holy Spirit. They've not cast a demon on anybody. All of that goes on inside the building. This is the cool story. So here is Brother Copeland. Brother Copeland says, he, he starts the conference out like this. He pulls up one of their books. He said, just think, guys, if it wasn't for you and I in this ministry, these people wouldn't even have a job. Then he threw it away. When you stand for God and stand in strength, some people look at you and say, why are you being like that? Because we have an enemy who's determined to destroy. And in my estimation of the kingdom, it doesn't matter what God says to me about how to pray. 
I want my words to be absolutely accurate so that the Father can say to me, Samuel, say this, you and I say it, and bam, it comes to pass in people's lives in Jesus' mighty name. Are you ready? Grab your prayer book. And I want us to, to speak page number three together in the prayer book. Let's speak it together. Are you ready? We're going to start with number one. Ready? Father God, we thank you that today is an awesome day for our community of faith and the entire body of Christ. We thank you that we arise with joy of the Lord and keep rejoicing all the days of our life. Thank you, you make us happy with wisdom. Your grace and favor pour out abundantly upon us. We are enjoying life more abundantly. We have eternal life. We choose life and exercise sound judgment. You order our steps and make our way perfect. You give us peace that passes all understanding. We always hope and trust in you, Lord, and see your goodness. We walk in great faith and in the truth as we fulfill our assignments, our purposes, our missions, and our goals. Thank you that your love in and through us never fails. We are blessed and we are a blessing to all the families and nations. We're on page four now. If you're wondering what we're reading, it's page four from the prayer book that we put together. And if we haven't given you a copy of that yet, we sent them out to anybody that asked for them and because we want you to have one because we're going to begin to do this in it. And if, like Brother Tanvir, I don't know that we can even, it may even make sense to send one to you, but help me remember, love, <clears throat> that we can send one to him electronically. Oh. I'm going to write it down. I don't usually stop and write, but somehow we got to get this done. We are on number 13, which is um, Page four, ready? We have victory and good success on every hand. Our work develops our potential and power to get wealth. We overcome every obstacle by faith. We bring forth much fruit that remains. 17, we are the head above only and the lender. Your creative power in us and through us brings great increase, Lord. 19, we prosper and have good success at work and at play. Thank you that we all enjoy 100% employment and kingdom work, and we are fulfilled in our work and enjoy the great benefits of it. 21. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. 22. We're doers of God's word and the works of Jesus. Thank you that signs, wonders, and miracles follow us because we believe we speak with wisdom 
and our words are with power. Thank you that we are protected from all evil, and no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Say it with me again. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. 25. We bear the fruit of the Spirit and manifest the gifts of the Spirit. We train our children in the way that we should go, in the ways of the Lord to be godly seed. Thank you, Father, that our families are saved, blessed, and prospering. Our households and communities are peaceful and loving. There is no lack among us because we seek you, Lord. The blessing has made us rich without sor sorrow or painful toil. 31. Thank you, Lord, that we are healthy and sickness and disease cannot come nigh us. Our minds are renewed by the word of God and we are transformed into the image of Christ. Number 33. Our lives reflect and establish the kingdom culture and our leadership influences our environment for good. We seek first your kingdom, Lord, and every need is met. We delight ourselves in the Lord, and you give us the desires of our heart. Thank you. Our God is with us, and we are zealous of good works. Lord, manifest your glory to and through us, and make this the best day of our lives. 38. Make us a praise in the earth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, that was all verses about who you and I are in Christ Jesus. That's an important thing to already have spoken so that you and I now are functioning in that place of power and authority as we now speak to our enemy and remind him of exactly where he is on this earth. You ready? You and I are dealing now with their enemy and um, we, are, we are going to be using... Um, Verse number, we're not verse, page number eight and nine, page number eight and nine. Number one, eight one. We pursue God's high calling, lay aside every weight, time waster, distraction, and sin. In the name of we, number two, we are whole and God is our only source. God's angels are on assignment to minister to us and for us. Number three, here we go together. It is important that we're all speaking this together so we can see God's work done. In the name of Jesus, Satan, we bind, resist, and cast away your witchcraft your sorcery, your divination, your enchantments, your dark arts, your antichrist spirits, and we destroy your spells, your curses, and your incantations against us. Now, you ready? I'm gonna I'm going to make a change right now since we printed this because we've grown that much. Every, is everybody with me here? I want everybody to be with me so you can see this. Jesus destroyed. And we remind you, we do not follow deception. Now, 
Number three, listen, this is the power of what's going on in this group. This is the power of it. As we are growing and developing and being established in God right here, right now, today. Right here, right now, today. We are growing, we are de developing, and we're being established in God right here, right now, today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read number three again. Watch this. In the name of Jesus, Satan, we bind, resist, and cast away your witchcraft, your sorcery, your divination, your enchantment, your dark arts, and your antichrist spirits. All are just deception. Jesus Christ, Jesus destroyed your curses, your in incantations, your spells against us, and we remind you, we do not fall for your deception. Think about that. Now, guys, when we put this together two months ago, I can see me changed since then. Greater understanding. You got to see that that's what this whole thing is about. We are coming to a greater understanding. We can stay bound by the past or we can get hooked up to where God is today and move forward. All right. Here we go. We're going to be doing eight page eight, number four. I, wait, we got to do Numbers 23, 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and Israel, look what God has done for his people. Look what God has done for his people. Now, Pastor, help me get an understanding of that. All right, here's the understanding. God has blessed Israel. And if you please grasp this understanding. That verse, Numbers 23, 23, was written... 4,000 years ago? Somewhere between four and 5,000 years ago, Numbers 23, 23 was written between four and 5,000 years ago. There is no incantation against, against Israel. That verse is really old. It's been around a long time. It's been around a very, very, very long time. <laughs> What's your point, Pastor? The point is this. It's time we start acting like that verse is true. Yeah. All the way from Numbers 23, 23. Here we go, verse 4. In the name of Jesus, we bind, resist, and cast away your tyranny mind control, strife, and division, your scornfulness and unbelief. Now, guys, that verse right there deals with many, many powerful things. What are we binding? It's all deception. It has no power. It has no power. Just say it with me. All tyranny, you have no power. In the name of Jesus, according to the word of God, your power is stripped. You never had it. He's never had the power. All the power was given unto God. All the power is given unto Jesus. Wait, we're the body of Jesus. All the power is given unto us to function in. All of it. Every single bit of it. 
Are we functioning in it? Or are we worried about strife, worried about unforgiveness, and worried about brother so-and-so, and why'd they say that, and who did that, and all this? Or are we just going to stand in the Word of God and walk down through this earth and conquer in Jesus' mighty name? Welcome, Teresa. Good to have you with us today. Teresa Dowd, you're a faithful, faithful believer here. And we and we truly, truly love you and appreciate you for being here and being a part. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Phyllis Raymond, Mary Ann McDonald, we welcome you and we're glad that you're a part of our day. We're now in verse number five. We're in page eight, number five. In the prayer book, you ready? We cast away your hatred and your rage, your violence and destruction, your foolishness and your ignorance, your rebellion and your lack of respect for authority. You have no, say this with me, you have no power. You cannot destroy us. In Jesus' name, amen. See, guys, here's the challenge that we're faced with. Back, back, in, to, in, to, <laughs> back in Kentucky, we had a statement. It was called, you shuck it down to the cob. You know what that means? You, you take that ear of corn and you twist it like this in your hands till all the kernels fall off and you got nothing left but the cob. All right? What you and I are doing right now is shucking this thing down to the cob. We're getting this down right to the very core of where it's at. And all of a sudden, you're going to see so many things absolutely change about how we pray and how we live every single day. You ready? We're going to start verse 6 out, or number 6 out, with the words, no deception. You ready? Wait, let's do by the name of Jesus and then say no deception. By the name of Jesus. Whoops, we got to go clear to the power of the Most High God in my editing here. By the name of Jesus and by the power of the Most High God, no deception. We command all chains of darkness and the enemy of death to be broken and destroyed over our community of faith and the entire body of Christ in our stewardship. Think about that fact. What power do you and I have except the name of Jesus and the power of the Most High God living on the inside of us? But here's the reality. We do have Jesus in us. We do have the Most High God in us. When we say these words, it's rolling down through the eternities and demons are they're being rolled. The challenge that you feel right now, guys, because I'm telling you, I, there's a pushback. I can feel a pushback today, big time. The challenge we feel is like, but we're not yelling. We're not really, we're not really praying. You're just talking in the midst of it. The reality is our control is that simple. Devil, shut up. Deception, shut up. Back to your work. Jesus got out of the boat with the the the, the, the man madman of Gadara, the Gadarenes, demoniac. Got out of the boat, and when he got out, he looked at him and said, Come out. As soon as he got out of the boat, he didn't wait. He knew why he was there. And the and the demon starts manifested, comes and bows down at Jesus' feet, and Jesus said, Be silent and come out. You can't torture me before our time. Jesus said, Shut up, come out. What is your name? Legion. Come out. Why? There's no arguing with the enemy. He has no power.
pretty soon you're going to see this is a life of absolute peace. Hell and destruction happening everywhere around you. It does not come nigh your dwelling. Remember Psalm 91? Only with your eyes will you see the destruction of the wicked. Only with your eyes. Let's keep going. What number are we in? Seven. Ready? Wow. In the name of Jesus, we forbid any and every genetic impulse and influence prone to sin and the fallen nature of man. We are... I'm, I'm, I'm making an edit. Apologize. Okay. Why? We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Now let's, I want to read number seven again. And I want us to end it and the end is we are a new creation in Jesus. You ready? In the name of Jesus, we forbid any and every genetic impulse and influence prone to sin and the fallen nature of man. I am a new creation. See, that's the greatest thing about this, this forbidding is, wait, I'm a new creation. Get out of my life. I'm a new creation. Get out of my life. Say it with me. I'm a new creation. Get out of my life. I am a new creation. Get out of my life. You ready? Number eight. We make disciples and expand the kingdom of God. We enforce that Jesus had destroyed the works of the devil. And we establish God's covenant as it is this day. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Think about this. All of a sudden, guys, we're not functioning from freaked out. We're functioning from total authority, total dominion, total power, total strength, total victory. It is who we are in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, what time is it? 18? Let's run right through page number nine. It's tough, but we'll just do it. Okay. We'll make edits when we're done. Number one, we take our places as the Lord's house, established in the top of every mountain of influence. And we now repossess every nation and kingdom every land and all wealth to the uttermost parts of the earth for the glory of God. Isaiah 2, 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house will be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Number two, we establish the culture of the kingdom of God and drive out every enemy and adversary opposing God's people by deception. Three, the Lord execute vengeance against every wicked agent of the devil who dares to attack the righteous in our community of faith. Number four, in the name of Jesus, we are reclaiming all ground lost to the enemy. We are advancing in full force, clothed in the armor of God, 
have on. Our, we have on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. Our loins are girded with truth, and our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We take the shield of faith and quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and we wield the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. In the name of Jesus, Satan, we bind and cast away from us you and all your spirits sent to penetrate our shield of faith and sent to nullify our kingdom impact on this earth. You only have deception and it has no power against us in the name of Jesus. Say it with me. You only have, you have no power. You have no power. And we live and we grow and we develop in the things of God. All right. Here we go. It's time for us to put our verses in and bring to a close this time of prayer today. This has been a good time of prayer today. A time when we've gotten much accomplished in the things of God. Why? Because we're sticking with the word. Say it. Stick with the word. We've got to stick with the word. In Jesus' mighty name. So I got Psalm 91. Sister Leanne's got Psalm 103. I already added uh, Psalm 133, 1 through 3. Yeah. It's going slow today. All right. All of you that are the verse people, we welcome you to help us get this accomplished every time we're here. It's a very interesting situation because there's times when you can just copy and paste right out of the notes and they just bam, go right over there. And then there's other times where that just doesn't happen. And you sit there and you look at it like, you know, it's all right if you went ahead and just let me. <laughs> all right, here we go. Our final verses for today. Psalm 133, 1 through 3. Read these with me. A song of a sense of David. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It's like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Why? Because we stand together in unity. And now the next verse in line is Psalm 91. These are all in the comments there. You can read right along with us in the comments. This is out of the Jerusalem Bible, Psalm 91. If you live in the shelter of Elyon and make your home in the shadow of Shaddai, you can say to Yahweh, my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. He rescues you from the snares of fowlers, hoping to destroy you. He covers you with his feathers and you find shelter underneath his wings. You need not fear the terrors of night, the arrow that flies in the daytime, the plague that stalks in the dark, the scourge that wreaks havoc in broad daylight. Though a thousand fall at your side and 10,000 
at your right hand, you yourself shall remain unscathed with his faithfulness for shield and buckler. You have only to look around to see how the wicked are repaid. You can say, Yahweh, my refuge, and make Elyon your fortress. No disaster can overtake you. No plague come near your tent. He will put you in his angel's charge to guard you wherever you go. They will support you on their hands in case you hurt your foot against a stone. You will tread on lion and adder, trample on savage lions and dragons. I rescue all who cling to me. I protect whoever knows my name. I answer everyone who invokes me. With them when they are in trouble, I bring them safety and honor. I give them life long and full and show them how I can save. Say this with me. God is with me when trouble is all around me. Amen? It, no, it doesn't get to us. The cool thing about you and me is the more we push out of God and his word, the farther out trouble has to be. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 23. The Lord... Wait, I want to say it first person. Lord, you are my shepherd. I shall not want. You make me to lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside the still waters. You restore my soul. You lead me in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever wow isn't that something elisa said she's not seeing the verses rebecca smith welcome this is this is what we act we keep saying guys just pray with us every day and declare the will of God. And that is, our equipment runs great, Facebook works great, and we have no hindrance in getting this work done. Amen? Amen? We are now in Psalm 103, verses 1 through 8. A Psalm of David. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Verse 6, the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. 
And now, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Somebody say, glory be to God. Now, what did we get accomplished today? This is what we got accomplished. Thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. This is what we got accomplished today. What have we spoken? The word of God for the last hour and a half. We've spoken his word that he is God. He has all power and we walk in his ways. And we ended it with our declaration of faith. Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when we dwell together. There's a commanded blessing. Psalm 91, we're surrounded and protected by the angels of the Lord. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. You, Lord, are my shepherd. And then Matthew chapter 6. Thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And as God spoke to President uh, George Washington, and he made that statement, while the stars remain in the heavens and the dew descends upon the earth, so long shall the union last. Son of the Republic, what you've seen is thus interpreted. Three great perils will come upon the Republic. The most fearful is the third. But in this greatest conflict, whole world united shall not prevail against her. Let every child of the Republic learn to live for his God, his land, and the union in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And we finish with this. Long may this land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us, Lord, by thy great might. Great God, our King, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we bless Brother Tanvir. We bless Long Reach Ministry. As they sleep this evening, may their lives be blessed in every way. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Well, we got anything else we got to say? All right. Alisa, you got anything else we need to say? Thank you for posting those verses. All right, well, here we go. We say this on a regular basis every time we come here. Ready? We love, we love you. God, God loves you. you. And, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord.